to the panel, Labor Senator Kimberley Kitching and Liberal Senator James Patterson. Kimberley, do you think Labor will ban Adani one way or the other? I think exactly as Bill said, that if there is, that you've got the legislation and the regulations and from that um, you, we have the rule of law and we, it depends if they pass, the, pass those tests and pass the approval processes that are in place and that have been in place. So if they do that and it can stack up financially, um, in, in, environmentally and commercially, I think they will be, they'll get their approval. But, I mean, one of the things, Andrew, of course, is that this government has delayed the election partly so that they can deal with the Adani mine issue. This has become a political football within the Liberal Party between those in the LNP and those Liberals in Victor some of the seats in Victoria where, this, you know, having Adani, an Adani coal mine in Liberal Party yeah. heartland is like is electoral death. No, look, so uh, you, is, you make a point there, like, but James, a James Patterson... No, I've got that, Kimberley. But, yeah, James Patterson, I mean, Kimberley, it sounds reasonable, but we've actually seen the Queensland Labor government uh, actually set one new test after another. I mean, they'll, they'll never give up. They keep making new tests for the Adani mine. Do you think if Labor wins the election, Adani will go ahead? Well, Andrew, I've got breaking news for Kimberley, and that is that the Adani coal mine is, in fact, not going to be in Victoria. In fact, it's going to be thousands of kilometres away in Queensland. And can I say, as a Victorian Liberal senator, I'm very pleased uh, to see that Adani's got yet another approval. And I hope they're successful in getting all of their approvals, because the construction of the Adani coal mine doesn't just mean thousands of jobs for central and northern Queenslanders. It also means helping lift Indians out of energy poverty, one of the most um, profound reasons that people are still in poverty today. And it means that much higher quality Australian coal is going to be used in India rather than inferior quality coal uh, around the rest of the world. The truth is we have no idea what Bill Shorten would do as Prime Minister if he was elected because he's been He's openly contradicted himself, depending on where it is he's been campaigning. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's in Townsville, he says one thing. If he's in um, uh, the inner north in Melbourne, he says something completely different. So who and, knows what James, the Australian government would do with the Adani coal mine? And, but, James, it, it, it is it's easy for a senator to say, you know, I don't care about the electoral ramifications, particularly when you're number one on the Senate ticket. For some of your uh, colleagues in marginal seats, I don't know. I mean, you now get get up saying, because of this, now, because, whatever, whatever it says. GetUp's now saying because of this decision, it's going to make an extra 100,000 calls to defeat Health Minister Greg Hunt down in uh, Flinders and 80,000 calls to Kuyong to defeat Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. There is going to be a backlash by, uh, to some of your colleagues, isn't there? Otherwise, Andrew, presumably GetUp would have been supporting Greg Hunt in Flinders and would have been supporting Josh Frydenberg and Kuyong. I mean, seriously. Um, I've seen those media reports that speculate that Victorian Liberals were opposed to this being approved. I've seen none of my Victorian colleagues say that publicly. And when I've discussed it with them this week and last week, none of them have expressed that sentiment to me. So um, I have no evidence that that is, in fact, a, a true theory at all. But Kimberley, may, meanwhile, uh, the, you've got the government attacking your party, Labor, on its policy to make us buy electric cars and put very new, a very tough new emission standards on petrol ones. Here's the Prime Minister, and I'll get you to comment on this. Have a listen. What Labor is doing with their emissions reduction policy, taking the choices away from Australians of what car they even are going to drive. What we've seen from Labor is telling Australians how they should live their lives, what car they can drive, taking their money away from them in higher taxes and removing the choices that they ultimately have about how they see their way forward. Kimberley, I think you, you guys sounds... have made a mistake, haven't you, making it seem like there's a compulsion here? He sounds shrill and desperate. This isn't the end of the weekend, as the Prime Minister said. He always... He just cannot help himself but overreach. Do you know what the goal of the Liberal Party is? That 50% of new car sales in Australia will be of electric vehicles in 2030. That is the government's, the current government's policy. There is in fact an agency called arena.gov.au, complete with blog from a former environment reporter at The Age, and that, that 
If you go to that site, you will see that they are spruiking electric cars. That is how entrenched this policy is in this government. Now, the question is, does one want to be, you know, come to Parliament, as some of James, I'm going to exclude James from this, as some of his colleagues might like to do in a horse and buggy? Or do they want to come to Parliament, perhaps, in an electric vehicle? This yeah, but can I ask you, Kimberley, if, 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 if Labor doesn't get your vehicle. target, Kimberley, if Labor doesn't get this 50% target by 2030, only 11 years away, 50% of new car sales electric, what are you going to do? And it's a, as you said, Andrew, it's a target, much like, well, exactly like the government has the same target. And in fact, James? what I have found most disturbing is that you've got people spruiking both sides of this story. You've had four members of the executive who have been out and about, Josh Frydenberg, Angus Taylor, um, Greg Hunt, Stuart Robert, spruiking electric cars. And you've got modern liberals, so people distinguishing themselves from the liberal brand as modern liberals who are now saying this is, you know, the end of the Ute. I mean, it's... Yeah, but I, I don't know what you're going to go... It, if you don't get the target, what are you going to do uh, to people to make us get the target? James, what do you think? Andrew, Kimberley mentioned the horse and buggy, and, of course, the horse and buggy was replaced uh, by the internal combustion engine, but it wasn't replaced because we put a taxes on horse and buggies or because we subsidised Ford Motor Company. It was replaced because it was better technology and consumers made a choice to go for new technology. I'm actually really positive about the prospects of uh, electric cars. I think it's a really exciting area of technological development, but we don't need to get there as the Labor Party is proposing to do by making it more expensive or impossible to buy a lot of the cars that we, we drive today. If they set the emissions t uh, standards for fuel, as they are proposing to do, then it will become impossible or expensive to buy the kind of cars Australians are buying right now, like a Toyota Hilux, Australia's best-selling car, um, or a Ford Ranger, Australia's second best-selling car. I mean, that is, will have profound implications for consumers who just want to buy a car that they can afford that suits their purposes. And, Andrew, there is no mandating. This is not a mandated policy. This is a target. Exactly exactly the same so target, exactly, the, exactly the same target that the current government has. We don't have that an target standard for cars. We're you not have, to lift that. You, you, have, are. you have the target of 50% so of new, tar, new car sales in Australia. It's actually 25% to 250% no, target. No, it's not a 50% yeah, target, 50 it's a range. 50% target by 25, 2030. 250%. That's, well, um, if you go and look at your uh, website, I mean, you will see that. You're contradicting your own leader here, contradicting your own policy uh, here. No, no, can, no, can, no, can, no, I, uh, can I intervene, guys, because we're running out of time? Can I intervene, because we're running out of time? It's a target. Yeah, yes. it's the Liberal policy, to be frank, is between 25 and 50 per cent, so th that bit's true, but the rest but you say is also is true. But 50 per cent is the upper... That's... Here yes. we go. Uh, the Victoria Police have now checked uh, this assault on Independent Senator Fraser Ranning by a 17-year-old boy protesting at his anti-Muslim comments. Police say no charges will be laid on either Ranning or the boy. Uh, the boy's been officially cautioned. Anning has been held to have uh, reacted in self-defence. Good decision. James? Uh, I think none of... Oh. Andrew, this is a really regrettable trend that we're seeing, the, um, the personalisation and, the, and, and making physical our political differences. It's seen it in the United States in recent years where politicians can't go out to a restaurant without being harassed and abused. I really don't want to see Australia go down that uh, line, whether it's Fraser Anning or any other politician. Um, we should be keeping our political difference to, to speech and, and keeping it verbal, not making it physical. So um, I hope this is a, a, a warning uh, lesson for everyone. Well, we'll see. Yeah, good luck. Kimberly Kitching, James Patterson, thank you both so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew.